Good morning. Good to be together today. Some of the words we've been singing this morning were really standing out to me. It's good to be in the, the presence of a, a God who is supremely kind, for He is good. The Lord is good, and kind are all of His ways. It is a, a blessed thing to be in His presence, the, the presence and warmth of a, of a God like that this morning. Well, this is the, the last week in, in the book of Proverbs, uh, last week in our series going through Proverbs chapters 1 through 9. I hope that you have benefited from this and, and also perhaps even enjoyed this time that we spent together this summer thinking about the need for wisdom in our lives and, and what a great benefit it can be if we can learn to listen to wisdom's call for our lives today. As we wrap things up this morning, I want to get to the very heart of what we've been trying to talk about all along in this series. Through the eyes of our Christian faith, I want to get right to the, the heart of the matter this morning. So for the past few weeks, uh, we've been examining three of wisdom's words for us. You may remember as we've been going through Proverbs chapters 1 through 9, there are these common refrains that keep coming up again and again, and we've been calling them wisdom's words. Number one, listen up. Number two, don't forget. And number three, watch out. These are the things that we've been hearing over and over again in Proverbs 1 through 9. You may also remember that as we hear these wise words given to us, very much all of them have been spoken in a voice like that of a father to a son, in a voice like that of a parent to a child. Over and over again, we have these parental instructions which guide us to wisdom. So we had, hear my child, your father's words, and do not reject your mother's teachings. Listen up, my friend be wise. We had, my child, do not forget your father's commandments. Let your heart keep my word. Don't forget what I've shared with you. Do this, my child, the Proverbs say, and save yourself. Watch out from all those other things that get in the way. These are the parents' wise instructions to us in this book. But then we get to chapter 8. And something remarkable happens. Yes, we have another speech that's talking about wisdom here in chapter 8. But this time around, it is not in the voice of a father to a child. It is not in the voice of a mother to a child that we find these words. In Proverbs chapter 8, in this brilliant move, the Scriptures take up the voice of wisdom itself. And it is a powerful voice. For chapters and chapters, we've been hearing these teachings that are about wisdom. Now wisdom is going to speak up for herself. And it's breathtaking what wisdom has to say. I want to spend some time this morning in what wisdom has to say. Proverbs chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, we set the stage. Does wisdom not call... And does not understanding raise her voice? We have this metaphor in chapter 8. Is wisdom like a woman crying out? Does wisdom not call? On the heights, verse 2, beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand, beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals she cries out to you, O people I call. And my cry is to all that live. What does she say? Verse 22, the Lord created me at the beginning of His work, the first of His acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no spring abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When He had not yet made the earth and the fields or the world's first bits of soil, when He established the heavens, I was there. When He drew a circle on the face of the deep, when He made firm the skies above, when He established the fountains of the deep, when He assigned to the sea its limits so that the water might not transgress His command, when He marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside Him. 
like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. And now my children listen to me, says wisdom. Happy are those, blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear my instructions and be wise and do not neglect it. Happy is the one, blessed is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. This is the key to all of it. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. Wisdom in this passage, in her own words, tells her story. And it's breathtaking, right? This speech that she gives. This story that she tells. It's a powerful passage. I love this passage quite a lot. For me, in in some strange way, this kind of reminds me a little bit of that moment in The Wizard of Oz, if you remember seeing that movie. Before the curtain is pulled back at the end and we see what's really going on, there's this moment when Dorothy and company, they finally arrive in the presence of the wizard and they hear that voice, booming voice, and it's breathtaking there for a moment. Because all of this time they've been journeying along and they've been hearing all these things about this mighty wizard who knows all and who can tell you all things. And, and the, the anticipation has been building and building and building and over time. And then finally, they're right there in the room and they hear that voice and it's powerful. That's the kind of thing that the Proverbs have been doing and setting up for us. All this time as we've journeyed through the Proverbs, we've been hearing these things about wisdom. We've heard what the father and the mother say about wisdom. And it's been building up this respect that we have. We've learned that this is a voice that we should desire and want and seek with all of our heart. And now we're in the room. And wisdom clears her throat and she speaks these words. What does she say? She says, I was there. Figuratively speaking, she tells stories from the beginning of time. Stories from the creation of the world and it's breathtaking. Wisdom was there by the side of the Creator as He formed the universe with His voice. Wisdom was there by the side of the Creator as He pulled up the mountains from the sea, as He framed the skies with his hands, as he tamed the, and harnessed the waters by his command. Wisdom says, I was there. With each line and each phrase in this speech, it's as if wisdom says, take it from me. I've seen it myself. I was there by the Lord's side. I saw it all. I even shared in it like a master worker. I delighted in the work of the Lord. And the Lord delighted in me. And after all of this breathtaking, authority building stories that wisdom tells, now she addresses us, wisdom does, like a parent to a child. And now, my children, listen to me. Who could not listen after all that we've seen and heard? After all that wisdom has seen and heard from the beginning, because at the end of the day, whoever finds me finds life, she says. At the end of the day, those who hate me love death. Here's what I want to do today. As we conclude our series in Proverbs today, I want to take what I think is a last important step to knowing and understanding wisdom. I want us to pull back the curtain this morning, like in the Wizard of Oz, and see whose mighty voice this really is. This morning, we're not just asking, what is wisdom, or what does wisdom say? We're asking the question, who is wisdom? Whose voice is this that we hear? It's no fraud with a megaphone, I can tell you that. What I want to say today is that when we read the Proverbs through the eyes of our Christian faith, we learn that none other than Jesus Christ himself is the fullness of God's wisdom 
for the world. None other than Jesus Christ himself can say to us what the Proverbs say to us. Whoever finds me finds life. And whoever chooses otherwise injures themselves. I want us to consider today that Jesus really is the full embodiment of what God has promised all along in His wisdom. That He makes foolish the wisdom of the world and that He brings life to those who follow His voice and obey Him. Who is wisdom? We look no further than the man on the cross. Even in this Old Testament passage that we've just read together, I think we get our first glimpses of this connection that we see in Scripture. This passage in a partial way reveals to us what will be Christ's role in the wisdom of God, even if it only sees in part what something like John's Gospel will show us in full. Still, we catch some glimpses of what Christ is in this passage and what He'll make clear that He is God's wisdom fulfilled. I want to look at three things in this passage that sort of pave the way, a shadow to what the New Testament will bring to light, that Christ is the Lord's wisdom. The first thing we learn in Proverbs chapter 8 is that like Jesus Himself, wisdom in this passage claims to be a child of God. Did you see this? Look at verse 22. Uh, In that verse, that word created there, possessed, as some translations might say, it can literally be rendered fathered. That's how it is used elsewhere in the Old Testament, like in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Wisdom is begotten of God. Wisdom is fathered by God at the beginning of His works, from the beginning of the world. Wisdom, like Jesus, claims to be a child of God from the beginning Verse 24 is the same thing. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. This is the way the Old Testament talks about giving birth. It's the language of parentage. God brought me forth from the beginning. Wisdom like Jesus. The child of God from the beginning of the world. Not only that, but wisdom like Jesus himself is a beloved child in God's eyes. I was daily his delight, wisdom says. The Lord took delight in me. From the beginning of his creation, I was in his good favor. And maybe most importantly of all, like Jesus himself, wisdom knows and sees what we have never seen. God in his fullness. And wisdom bears witness to what we have never seen. It tells us about God. So in the same way that wisdom is God's delight, wisdom also delights in people. And so wisdom will say to people who have not seen God as wisdom has, listen to me, I will show you the way of life. The child of God. Beloved by God, bearing witness to God, to the world. This is what wisdom says in wisdom's own words. And you can see how this portrayal of wisdom gives us a little glimpse, a little foretaste of what Jesus is ultimately going to do in his fullness. Now I do want to say a word here because some people may wonder about the fact that Wisdom in this passage is personified metaphorically in in female terms. And does this mean that it can't possibly point to Jesus? Really, I think that this is kind of a non-issue. Because when the Proverbs are talking here, they're not speaking directly about Jesus. They're not speaking specifically about Jesus. It is laying the groundwork of what the Gospels will later bring to fullness. What this passage is doing in chapter 8 is it's speaking figuratively about a characteristic of God, God's wisdom, this quality of God that he is wise, and the way that it speaks about God in this way is through this metaphor, by making it a person, personifying it. It's kind of like the same thing that we do in our culture when we talk about Lady Liberty or Lady Justice. It's not that liberty or justice are actually female, we're talking about these qualities and this is the way that we kind of bring them to light with words. 
In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, the word for wisdom is a, a feminine noun. It's a feminine word. And so when the Proverbs try to talk about God's quality of wisdom, they use this word and this metaphor that would fit with their word for wisdom. Yet everything that is said here about this quality of God points forward to what we will see when we're talking about the person of Jesus in the New Testament. And in the New Testament, in the fullness of time, these same things that were true of this characteristic, God's wisdom, are then shown to be true of Jesus, God's Son. The Gospel of John, among other things, makes this quite clear. It doesn't use exactly the same word because John has seen the risen Jesus and he's not just talking about the abstract quality of God's wisdom. He's talking about God's wisdom revealed in the Son. And so he uses a little different word. He uses the word, word, which is actually a masculine noun in the Greek language, logos. It covers a lot of the same meaning as the word for wisdom. But notice that the message is very much the same. For John and the rest of the New Testament, Jesus is God's wisdom. It was Jesus, like wisdom in the Proverbs, who was there in the beginning, who saw the Lord at work. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It is Jesus who has seen and testifies to God's work from the beginning of time. It is Jesus, like wisdom in the Proverbs, who is beloved in God's sight and is a master worker along with the Lord. Uh, all things came into being through Him. And through without Him, nothing has come into being. He was in the world. The world came into being through Him. Like wisdom in the Proverbs, Jesus is the delight of God, the beloved Son of God, he is the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. And most of all, like wisdom in the Proverbs, Jesus is the one who has seen what we cannot see, what we have never seen, and helps to make it known. No one has ever seen God, but it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's side, Father's heart, who has made him known. Jesus is the fulfillment of God's wisdom in human flesh. We said earlier in this series that wisdom is when we take the knowledge of God and apply it to life. Well, that's exactly what Jesus is because everything that we could say about God that is true of his character and his will and his way is revealed to us in Jesus. Applied to life when he comes to life in human flesh. He shows us the way. In the Proverbs, wisdom cries out in the streets to be heard, uh, cries out to the simple to answer and listen. In the Gospels, Jesus goes from town to town and street to street crying out, repent for the kingdom of heaven is here. It's upon us. In the Proverbs, we have this great collection of wisdom and it's said to be the wisdom that Solomon was given. And shared with us. And when Jesus comes onto the scene, he tells us something greater than Solomon is here. Jesus is the wisdom of God brought to life for us to follow. Which is why even when we read a book like Proverbs, which as we said at the start of this series, many people have forgotten to read because it's often lost on us or, or viewed as some moralistic book that we don't really care about that much anymore. But when we read this book of Proverbs through the eyes of faith, we see that it points us to Jesus still. We're challenged when we hear the passage today to see that in the end it is Jesus Himself who is saying to us, listen to me. Whoever finds me finds life. And whoever obtains me obtains favor from the Lord, did Jesus not say, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, if all of this has seemed like too much bouncing around, let's take it from Paul. 
who puts it quite simply for us. At the end of the day, we proclaim Christ crucified. And for some people that may seem to be foolishness, that we believe in a Christ that was crucified. For the Jews who do not believe, it's a stumbling block, Paul says. And for the Gentiles who do not believe, it's just mere foolishness. But for those who see it and those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, we know and we proclaim Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Who is wisdom? According to Paul, it is the man on the cross. And the power and salvation and life that he brings to the world. For the message about the cross may seem to be foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. To some it may seem foolish that God would reveal himself in this way. Impossible even. Unbefitting of a true God. That God would reveal himself through the execution of a so-called criminal on the outskirts of a conquered city 2,000 years ago. Like what kind of God of all power and wisdom would do something so foolish? Paul says, call it what you like. But at the end of the day, even God's foolishness, if we can even pretend to talk about it that way, even God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And even God's weakness, if we can talk about it that way, is stronger than human strength. So it shouldn't surprise us that the things of God seem strange to us. We cannot see as he sees. But for those who are able to see it because Jesus has revealed it to us, we see that God has worked in exactly this sort of way. He's chosen to reveal himself and save us through a magnificent defeat, through a courageous surrender, on a cruel yet victorious cross. The child who is the delight of God endured all of this because somehow in the Lord's eyes, He still yet delights in His fallen humanity and wants us back home again. It is because of the God who loves us that you are in Christ Jesus, Paul says, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Today, as we conclude our series, we remember that wisdom truly does call out to be heard in the pages of Scripture and in God's only Son. And those who listen truly do live because the way that the Son of God paves for us is a way to life for everyone who would choose to follow it. And if we can set aside our own foolishness and follow His way, we can share in His righteousness, His holiness, and His sweet redemption from our sins. Maybe there's someone here today who's ready to answer the call of wisdom for you. That is the call of God's Son to follow Him, to obey His words, to get on the way and the truth and the path to life that he paves for us. Maybe today we're challenged by the fact that God, so wise as he is, chose to save us in such a humiliating way because he loves us so. And maybe we're inspired by that to follow him more closely with our lives.